Hello everyone, today we are talking about breads. Breads are loved by everyone and almost essential in every diet around the world. It's versatile and can be used for meals on the go. But most of you know, whether you have diabetes or you are watching your carbs for dieting purposes, bread can be totally out of question when it comes to foods. Dr. Ahmed Ergen here, your YouTube endocrinologist. Today we are diving into the breads and see if you can have any breads in your diet, and if so, which bread types are best and which ones are worse for you. Is bread really totally out of question or is there any way around it? I know for a fact that there are a lot of like millions of diabetics out there, no matter how much I beg them, they won't give up on their bread. So instead of asking to give up their bread, I have come up with some suggestions and I'm gonna teach you some basics so that you can make your own mind. Later in this video, I'll give you some specific breads designed for diabetics you may want to try also. So stay tuned and stick around for all the good information that you're about to hear now. Look, I didn't invent the bread. It was invented in 18 BC by Egyptians. Actually, I don't blame them because they ate kind of good kind of bread, not the bread we eat. They did not have all that great technology we have today to rip apart all the fiber and nutrition of their grains. We did it. Well, jokes aside guys, there is a fact. There is significant difference in how your body reacts to different types of breads. And yes, all breads are nice because they're soft inside and crunchy outside. Yummy. Yep. Typically, bread is high in sugar. You know that. Wheat flour is commonly used to make that bread. As you eat, starch gets transformed to sugar. Actually, almost all breads incorporate some ingredients that with the added sugar. The amount of carbs in two pieces of white bread, for example, can be up to 160 calories, nearly 40 grams of carbohydrates. And yet, there may be only one gram of fiber, which means those two slices will cause your blood pressure to go to sky high within 30 minutes. Now, why fiber is important? Well. The fiber not only slows down the, inge the digestion, but also reduces the blood sugar spikes, and the dietary fiber has also potential to help you lose weight and control your appetite by making you feel fuller faster. Here's a quick trick for you. If you think that the bread that is classified as a multigrain is healthy for you, think again. The term multigrain only refers to the fact that it contains just a variety of grains. To claim that it's multigrain, actually, all you need is to have 1% of all the ingredients as grains. That does not mean the bread is composed entirely of whole grains. So as a result, multigrain breads can still be excessively processed and it can be lacking in nutrients and fiber. Gluten-free breads might also pique your interest, but they are not any better either. Gluten is a protein, so when you remove it, you are really not changing the carb content at all. How about the brown breads? Are they any good? Well, many brown breads actually contain a lot of sugar uh, that are made simply with the brown food coloring to deceive you into believing that they are actually healthy. How do you choose a good bread then, right? My suggestion is to look at the nutrition labels. First, you need to find the total carbohydrate and then locate the fiber content. You will want to maintain your fiber and protein high if you are trying to lose weight and prevent blood sugar spikes if you have diabetes. So I would say go for a carb to fiber ratio of 10 to 1 or even better, 5 to 1. So. A bread that has 10 grams of carbohydrate, for example, should include at least 1 to 2 grams of fiber per 10 grams of carbs. So what breads have the optimal carbohydrate to fiber ratio? Well, I would say begin with sourdough breads that are made with sprouted grains. Ezekiel bread, for example, is made from sprouted grains. So instead of flour, whole grains are used to make it so it is a lot of nutrition, a lot of good fiber. So sprouting also lo lowers the glycemic index. So sprouted breads rather than the typical flour breads are the best typically. Grains are also abundant in zinc, folate, iron, 
and magnesium. And just because sprouted breads are also unprocessed and they have generally higher nutritional value. So another trick to know if the uh, bread you are eating is healthy or not, and if the bread you bought can wait in the room temperature for more than two days without getting spoiled or rotted, trash that bread. Healthy breads go bad quickly, so either you um, keep your healthy bread refrigerated, and interestingly, for example, if you're looking for an Ezekiel bread in the store, you're not going to find that bread in your regular bread aisle. You're going to find it in the freezer, because those healthy breads don't really sit in there with the other breads. They go bad very quick. And if you cannot keep them in the refrigerator, just share with other people and just get that bread out of your house pretty quickly. Next up are flax, chia, and almond breads. These breads are um, basically nut flours that will have a lot of fiber and will have a lot of protein and fat as well. So before making a choice to look at the nutrition label because they can be low in carb but sometimes they are very high in calories so you have to keep that in mind as well. So how about wheat bread? Well, wheat bread is a form of whole grain bread. It is less nutritious than the whole grain bread though. So the wheat bread may not be any better than the other processed breads, contrary to the common belief. So look for whole grain breads instead, instead of the wheat bread. So sourdough bread is one of the best breads out there if you have diabetes and if you cannot give up on eating bread because it is fermented for a long time and it results in formation of lactic acid which is the same ingredient that you consume in apple cider vinegar. So as you know the vinegar has a beneficial effect on blood sugar control and a lot of studies say that you know it will reduce the insulin response and it will improve your insulin resistance and so forth. And sourdough bread has that in it. Another bread that is really good is pumpernickel. It is a type of bread prepared with rye flour and yeast and used sourdough as the main uh, ingredient. So it will have similar effect as a sourdough bread. And pumpernickel bread interestingly has eight times more fiber than the typical bread. So to be sure though, check the nutrition label to make sure it's not made up of like molasses and some other added sugars. Regardless of the bread, it's a good idea to have your bread with other healthy fats to reduce the chance of blood sugar spikes. And you can use, for example, you can dip it in the olive oil or you can spread some avocado spread. So bottom line, look for whole grain bread guys pumpernickel, sourdough, sprouted grain breads, these are the best one, and avoid those enriched breads, white breads, bagels, and all that stuff that you don't want to touch. And if you tried all these breads that I mentioned and you do not like them, then I would say try these low-carb breads, keeping the portions in mind, and I'll tell you a few of those brands out here. This video is not sponsored, I'm going to put some links for you down in the description below for you to get your hands on, but some of these can be actually found in your local grocery store. I have tried these breads and I have approved them for you. So let's get started on those, right? Now number one on my list is Sola bread. So it's S-O-L-A for the spelling. This bread is delicious, it is soft, it can be toasted, and it can be all just 2 grams of net carbs per serving. I promise this does not taste like a cardboard, and you will thank me for this suggestion later. They even make a sweet version of it, similar to the Hawaiian bread that everyone seems to, lo seems to love. I was able to pick the sliced bread at my local market and you may be able to do that as well and if not, check out the link below in the description in this video. Number two in my list is Sara Lee Delightful Healthy Multigrain Bread with only 45 calories per slice and 18 grams of net carbs for two slices. This one is made my list for sure. You can find this one easily in your gro local grocery store and is priced fairly right for that type of bread. Number three, Aunt Millie's Live Carb Smart Bread. I have only seen this one online and in health food stores, but it is very incredible actually. It has only one gram of net carbs, 
you have to try it. If you look at the nutrition label, this bread is loaded with fibers. That is the trick. Number four, the Joseph's bread. That's a lavash kind of flat bread, as a great choice for that type of bread. Has only 10 grams of net carbs and 100 calories for a whole lavash. You can make a wrap, uh, you can make a sandwich with this, and it is hearty, it is delicious. It's definitely not thin like a tortilla or a similar wrap. It actually has a substance and it will fill you up. You can find this one at your local store, and the brand also makes super tasty pita breads as well. Well, the number one and the last one is Kiss My Keto. <laughs> That's a funny name, but I mean, they have pretty good stuff. They're a little expensive, but I wanted to bring it up to your attention as well. These guys really get the five-star review from a lot of people. What makes this bread mind-blowing is that it has zero, yeah, you heard me right, zero net carbs. It also tastes good, has a great consistency. Unfortunately, this one can only be purchased online, and I have not seen this one on the shelves in the health food stores just yet. So let me know if you have seen this one so people can go get it. But I have provided a link in the description for you for that bread as well. So guys, I hope you give one of these breads a try and let me know what you think. And if, you, if there are breads out there that, that you know of and that I didn't mention but you like, please go ahead and share in the comments so our community benefits from that as well. So now go ahead and enjoy that turkey sandwich. Maybe put some healthy fats and avocado on it, guys. Stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, it, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.